Hi guys, what's up? It's me, Webs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm going to talk about what are variables and scope in JavaScript. In the previous video, I was talking about what are variables, how you can store values inside your RAM or your memory with the help of variables, how you can do certain basic things like adding, adding subtracting and other stuff with the help of a simple example. In this video, let's further explore variables and try to understand what this word scope means in JavaScript. So first, the question comes about naming variables. If you want to show your age on screen, let's say you write where x is 25. The problem with this is after six months when you come back and you look at your code, you're wondering what is x. It's better that you give meaningful names. For example, you could say where age is 25. That is a much better way of representing stuff. Same way, if you see variable names in JavaScript, the variable name, say my counter, is different from another variable, say my counter with capital my over here. Even a single character made capital or small changes everything in JavaScript because it's case sensitive. They can be of any length. The first character must be an underscore or a dollar sign or some letter which is either uppercase A to Z or lowercase A to Z. Other than that, numbers or anything else is not allowed to be the first letter. Subsequent characters may be anything which is letters, numbers, underscores, and dollar sign. Now again, remember, special sim symbols include only two of them. It's underscore or dollar sign. Equals, plus, comma, nothing is allowed. The variable name must not be a reserved word. Now we talked about reserved words in the previous video. If you guys haven't seen that, please go back and check it out. So what kind of names are valid? Underscore count is a valid variable name because the first character is an underscore. That's perfectly fine. Part 12 is a valid name because subsequent letters numbers they are perfectly fine number of items is also a valid one if you talk about invalid names 10 cards is an invalid name because the first character in the name is a number which is not allowed you can only have letters over there batman and robin is invalid because and is a special character which is not allowed the only two special characters that are allowed are underscore and dollar sign so given that you understand this let's go further talk about initializing variables so if you guys remember the first idea was that to create a variable in memory or let's say store a value in memory you use a keyword called var which tells your JavaScript interpreter that hey create this value store it in memory and refer to it using this variable name that's what you guys did right now initializing them now if you say where number one equals to null now why would you do that now if you're not giving any particular value to a variable that you guys just initialized then always give it null. It's a standard practice. It's a recommended practice. Now the program will of course work even if you don't give null here. If you just say where number one and semicolon. However, the recommended idea is that you give it null values. Now what happens with null? If you say where number two is five times number one. Now remember, number one has the value of null. So five times null is actually zero because null is treated as zero in JavaScript. Now take the second example here, which has pretty much the same thing where number one here we have not given any values in other words where number one semicolon this means number one has a default value of undefined in JavaScript now if you say where number two is five times number one number two has this value called n a n which is actually not a number it's a special value indicating that the result is not a number so we will be talking about NA and further in the upcoming videos. But for now, just remember that number one was undefined. Undefined into anything or undefined plus something is not a number. Now the funny thing is null number behaves like zero, the null value. And the undefined value behaves like not a number, that is nan. Now here's the irony. If you compare null and if you compare undefined, they are equal. Now you guys are like, oh, what the hell did I just read? Why is so? Because the idea is that null is kind of like not having any value and undefined also is kind of like not having any value because you did not give any value. So logically at a high level if you see both of them are pretty much the same in a logical perspective. Of course in a real way they are different. Now of course you cannot use a variable that has never been declared if you say area is length into breadth and let's say you have not returned where length or where breadth anywhere in your code above. And there's gonna be an error at this point and your script may not run so that's one of the most important things now we'll be looking at this nan and this undefined stuff in an example in webstorm in the same video so stay tuned variables let's further talk now variables in JS can hold any type of data now this is 
one new thing that we're talking about type of data what do you mean by type of data well you can have numbers like one two three say variable my number is one two three you can have names like where my name is lives in double quotes so there are different types of data or different types of values that you can have and that's what you talk about data types in JavaScript so for example here is where message is high during this initialization now here's the thing over here now you have simply said where message is high you have not specified anywhere in this line that you want to store a string type this type that you see over here which is text inside double quotes it's actually called a string in JavaScript so this kind of data you have not indicated here now in other programming languages if you guys are familiar with any of them there you have to specify what type of data you're gonna store inside a variable but here in JavaScript it's not compulsory you can have any type pretty much with the same where keyword now here's the thing it is not only possible to change the value stored but it's also possible to change the type now remember we call them variables right which means their value can be changed anytime first you see where test is high man then you can say test is hundred now notice carefully first test was containing a string value or textual data inside double quotes then test contains hundred which is a number which is completely different from the textual type you had above this is perfectly fine but it's not recommended so the variable message is first defined as having string then it is changed to have a numeric value hundred inside it now let's talk about scope of variables scope this word means the life of a variable how long is it alive where is it known where is it not famous it's a simple way of remembering that so scope of the variable is the part of the program where the variable can be accessed by you guys keep all the scope of the variables minimal now let's take an example and try to understand this idea better now where number global is 314 this number global is the most famous person ever this variable is known to everybody everybody knows this guy so now if you put two brackets here and if you make where number one is 10 number one is a local variable now the reason is number one is known only within this area it's kind of like movie stars Hollywood stars are known all over the world but if you talk about regional stars inside your country they are known only within your country the same way number global is like a Hollywood star whereas number one is like your regional actor who is known only within your area now this is the life of number one in other words within these two parentheses you can print the value of number one or you can modify the value of number one but outside this parentheses you cannot access it again you can further divide it you can have two more brackets let's say number two now when you talk about number two number two's lifeline is only within these brackets over here now go further inside and you can make where sum is number one plus number two now notice carefully where sum is declared or made or created inside these two parentheses therefore the life is this purple box that you see here so outside this parentheses nobody knows who is sum outside this parentheses no one knows outside this of course no one knows so that's the whole idea now in real situations or I should say real code that you guys are gonna write these two brackets might be very well some function brackets or some for loop or while loop brackets now we will be talking about what those are in the upcoming videos but for now just keep in mind that they bra those brackets could be anything functions loops conditions whatever so wherever you declare the variable within those two parentheses that surround it is where the life of the variable lies and the ones that you declare at the topmost outside all the parentheses is what you call as the global variable which is accessible everywhere throughout now we will be taking a look at this in code shortly so let's go further and talk about variable scope now like I said when you declare a variable outside any function or block the parentheses opening and closing ones which I showed you they are called blocks so when you declare a variable outside a block it's called a global variable outside every block in fact it's called a global variable so when you declare a variable within a function it's called a local variable because it's available only within that function again if you see here where number two is available only within these two parentheses which are very much like your function body so within that only this this variable is accessible or modifiable now remember it's important that you remember that where keyword defines variables it always defines variables inside the parentheses in which you are currently located which means outside that you cannot access it and that variable gets destroyed as soon as your function exists destroyed means it doesn't it, it gets wiped out from the memory 
as soon as your function is over. So further, if you need to define more than one variable, you can do it in a single statement with this, a comma like this. You can have something like where my name is Vivs. This is a textual string. Channel is Slidener. This is also textual string. Subscriber count is 16,000, which is a numeric value. Again, notice the same statement with the one single where keyword here. I have just created a variable, given its value, comma, variable equals value, comma, variable equals value. So that's the way you initialize it. Or I can say that's the syntax of initializing variables in JavaScript. Now, different data types can also be merged up into a single statement that you guys see here. So in the next video, let's go to WebStorm and actually play because the video has got longer and I don't want to put the code right here in this video. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks to RJ Christie for contributing this presentation. If you guys have some presentations on any subject, email us at slidenerd.gmail.com. Till then, have a nice day.